the situation in Indian universities in general uh, and universities uh, like JNU are uh, becoming more and more um, you know, difficult as far as genuine academic work is concerned. Um, that's mainly because of uh, the attack on universities on autonomy in the academic sense. Uh, the attack on autonomy simply means that government controls uh, various aspects of the university um, almost directly now. Um, in the sense of uh, uh, various institutions, various mechanisms, academic kind of uh, administration of university matters, etc. is going off and political power directly intervening in, in academic matters. That's at one level. Academic freedom for teachers and a large section of students also meant their freedom to keep uh, in touch with the wider society, not only for their research, etc., but also for uh, you know interacting with people of various movements, uh, and that was the way in which a society and uh, and an academic institution uh, has been benefiting from each other. So that aspect is also curtailed to a large extent. Universities on teachers and students' interaction with uh, the larger community is also curtailed. So academic freedom, therefore, are now, uh, no, those freedoms are now limited, both through administrative means, through direct channels of control from the government, and the compulsion to sever links of the academic community with larger society. So, so uh, sir, could you speak about uh, the recent raid which happened in Hanis, mm -hmm. Hani Babu? So, mm -hmm. what would be your uh, reason for that? You know, not, uh, some kind of a, how, how do you see that kind of a raid which happened? In you know, these are basically, uh, you know, attempts at uh, again um, stopping academics from uh, airing their opinion, mobilizing opinion for important matters of human rights in the country, and. Uh, uh, if academics are active in such fields, uh, when you read residents of, of a, uh, a well-respected university teacher like uh, him, what happens is, is that this is intended not only for, a, you know, curtailing such activities, but also stopping other teachers and students becoming active in the realm of defending the human rights of people and uh, you know in a way con you know maintaining that kind of linkage with movements which i've mentioned earlier so one thing uh, even if we consider in that level <laughs> uh, i'm just uh, i'm just thinking that what kind of an activism hani was involved mm -hmm. uh, because uh, for the state to go after him there are many other professors. Right, absolutely. I don't know what kind of logic. I think Hani himself was told of something on which he did not have a, <laughs> a clue, I think. So, uh, or, you know, people as people in this society know about various things. But, uh, you know, it's not about whether you are involved in something or not. That's not the question. The question as far as the, uh, the government and the, uh, you know, uh, the police mechanism is concerned. 
for them what is important is to not only keep a check on people threaten them with uh, with consequences so that you you withdraw from yeah. from the scene so one of the members of the teaching community uh, was taken away from the campus um, we actually don't know what are what are the cases that uh, were against him but uh, you know the question was uh, not about what uh, he was doing whether a person like him with that level of physical disabilities could be kept in jail for, for long so it was a basic uh, you know right of the university teacher which was at stake not about uh, you know all elements of what an individual teacher is interested in the ideas they have been propagating even if you know you may have differences of opinion with various ideas that any individual teacher has whether the state can do this to to a person this was the question and therefore to defend the rights uh, it was necessary to to have some action to give him some legal recourse and so on but uh, he's still languishing in in jail and uh, nothing much could be done so in this uh, formation of the defense committee and the activities mm -hmm. what was hani's uh, role in that hani was also an important member of that it's all uh, uh, you know so uh, did the uh, so the raid which happened there were two kinds of an approach huh. one kind of an approach is generally to see hmm. one kind of approach is that uh, whether for the defense committee they did or for his activism on uh, cst obc reservation right. right. so uh, what was his other activities as if you know yeah. you know anything no he has been uh, fighting for uh, reservation related issues standing with uh, Uh, different communities whose reservations are taken away uh, or there were many cases in which um, you know uh, there, there was some mobilization in the campus um, and I think that is an additional reason why he is being targeted like this because uh, you know th these are you know seemingly um, you know obstacles to to the new far right politics that is now spreading in the campuses and once you go against it these are the punishments that the state is uh, you know offering to to academics so as a person as a last one as a person from mm. uh, far away not mm. in touch with mm. any people here mm. what could be the because there were many people even in defense committee there were many people who were formed and who were very active also right. so i am just wondering what could be the threat as a state would go after him this one thing is certainly he was never uh, in touch with all of these people mm -hmm. He also says that as a part of defense company, I've been in touch with right. all these people who are in the prison. Right. But apart from that, I have not. Uh, so, yeah. what could be the reason, if you imagine that, uh -huh. just a hypothetical? Yeah, you know, it's very difficult to to say. You know what, what they found. Activism or is activism still a threat, or to uh. threaten others? They did this. Uh, or did they do any activism? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know he his activism was mainly on uh, these kinds of issues whether it's on reservation or on defending the rights of 
uh, you know, his own university teachers, um, and uh, which is extremely significant as a university community. And um, uh, if that kind of activism somehow uh, is taken as a pretext for threatening, and then you know future uh, cases, etc. That's what is happening with the rape. Uh, that is a, a very bad omen for for uh, academic freedom in general, and and for the, for the lives of people. You know, these are people who who, who want to have uh, you know a life of uh, uh, th that is. Uh, of uh, anybody else and uh, so and if teachers cannot express their opinion on any matter for that matter thing, and the universities cannot be a place of uh, airing diverse opinions where can one do this and any society which limits that to an extent we have seen that with the media with uh, uh, journalists facing that kind of problems, with corporate media totally uh, avoiding people's issues, etc. So what happens is that uh, at least the university, uh, as a, a as a place for exchange of Idea. ideas, if it, if there itself you face these kinds of problems, then it's it doesn't augur well for uh, the country. So as part of the defense committee, mm -hmm. uh, being part of that, and what do you feel uh, on the cyber bus issue? One is about the court, the way proceedings takes place. Then there is this public opinion which was created. In this, which one you find was more difficult to uh, even uh, discuss or, uh, or uh, address? You know, um, in my opinion, that's my yeah. personal take, uh, the issue could not be made into a big public issue in spite of uh, some attempts at uh, which, is, which is a failure on the part of all of us uh, and, and the society has, <laughs> at large. What was done actually in this case was to give him some legal recourse and some, uh, you know, opportunities to have his health protected <laughs> inside the jail. These were the minimum kind of things that were done. That were done. That so this failure, what could be the reason for that failure, in your opinion? What, what we all failed, uh, but where did we fail, you find? Uh, you know, at one level this can be, uh, you know, not making it to reach such levels because of the kind of unsaid, uh, um, the censorship, the the kind of control that is already in in yeah. our society in place. So there is something that is blocking everyone from expressing their opinions. Um, important human rights issues are not recognized as human rights issues, and the state's discourse, the dominant discourse on that. Uh, uh, as if anybody raising different opinions are against the nation, etc. That kind of logic prevails to a large extent. That can be challenged only by uh, some sense of justice and some sense of uh, rights, which uh, people, uh, you know, are uh, wedded to. Whether our society, as you well, <laughs> well, very well know, I need not tell you, know, the, uh, you know, how far these kinds of, uh, uh, you know, approach uh, is well entrenched in our society. It is not. 
So, uh, last one about the defense committee is, is there any hope of uh, at least the minimal what you said mm. that Sai Baba will get medical treatment in the mm. prison? Do you think that that is possible? No, all the basic amenities that uh, a person like him requires is not given health, health uh, as far as I know. I have not been, uh, uh, you know, knowing all the details recently. Uh, so, it it doesn't, uh, 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 you know, tell me anything positive about the implications of all these things.